Hi, my name is Bob Grinier, and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So uh, this update is about Bucky Fusion, and where we left off with the previous update is that at press time in this article here in New Energy News from September 1995, just a few short weeks after the transfer agreement was sent to Takaaki Matsumoto, uh, but not signed, there is this note here. At press time, we received information that the patent application had been bucked up to the DOE and DOD for classification review editor. I have not been able to find, and no one has also been able to find, any patent uh, on the author's name or the company's name or anything else so far. Um, however, I have found one other document here in Fusion Facts in the July 1996 edition, which one might assume uh, was put together quite a bit of time before that. Uh, again, Hal Fox here is mentioned uh, as editor of Fusion Facts. And so uh, you see how all these things are connected. And it is Chuck Bennett here talking about the Fullerene Fusion Group the microfusion fuel cell, so um, still at least some time between September and um, this time in July 1996, he is still talking about it. And he's saying here, the device described herein answers a third major concern for the deployment of cold fusion. How do we put a cold fusion energy source under the hood of a Toyota? Uh, he goes on, very small nano-sized pockets of ionized gaseous plasma form bubbles and are stabilized by nano-magnetohydrodynamics. So the interesting thing is here, he is talking about sonoluminescence and that the same thing occurs inside molten metal within a solid metal lattice. So he is connecting the process that goes on in sonoluminescence with what's going on in a solid metal lattice and of course that might be the case when you consider Russ George worked with both cavitation reactions and uh, metal lattice based reactions and he worked with this group at least in the initial tests so um, again very small nano sized pockets of ionized gaseous plasma form bubbles that are stabilized by nano magneto hydrodynamics this creates a self holding electromagnetic spherical vortex with a toroidal shaped internal flow the natural flow pattern resembles the constructed shape of the tokamak shell and so uh, essentially he is describing exactly what is observed so you have a toroidal shaped internal flow that leads to a spherical vortex structure and this is what does it i agree with this based on my physical observation and um, things that I've said over the last seven years. Uh, it is the goal of this device, of the device disclosed herein, to employ an energetic dynamo resulting from nanomagnetohydrodynamics to create a fuel cell that can power automobiles. The energy stems from the growth of small nanobubbles into large spheroid of charged plasma suspended and levitated in thickly shrouded housing okay so this is the uh, essential um, embodiment that he's talking about here and so it's the aggregation of these clusters into a large spheroid of charged plasma sounds pretty much like a ball lightning but he's not mentioning it here for some reason the finely very sorry very finely powdered metal most likely pure nickel doped with iron is used in conjunction with a feed of atomized water or steam to create the reaction and the resulting plasma dynamo deuterated fullerene has also been proposed to create such a dynamo so here we go again talking about um, carbon structures and I noted that in uh, late 2016, in Dr. George Eagley's interview that I did of him in Budapest, he was using uh, buckyballs, he was suggesting using buckyballs, and he was uh, using uh, 
other allotropes like nanotubes in his uh, dusty fusion experiments, some of those, but of course it's obviously suggested here way back in 1995 and 1996 by this group. Um, but And this also predates uh, Klimov's uh, video clip where he showed using carbon nanoparticles uh, effectively in his 2001 video that he shared recently in his plasma vortex fusion reactors. Anyway, electrodes are positioned for the extraction of excess electric charge, thus powering an electric vehicle. So here we are saying very specifically that the design of this thing that produces a spheroid of charged plasma that is suspended, levitated in a thickly shrouded housing has electrodes which are positioned for the extraction of excess electric charge. This is exactly the way that I had thought uh, to do this. And here it is uh, said in writing uh, in 1996, nearly 30 years ago, so this is not something anyone could patent. Um, this type of fuel cell is called a direct energy conversion device. However, the energy production is purported to result from mass energy release. Electric energy is required to start the motor. So basically it's electrically driven and they suggested using electromagnetic waves and or sound resonance in the other the other clips that I've given you and uh, uh, it ha is triggered uh, by these electrodes and the electric power is captured and so I think that's very useful so I will include this into the uh, list of references that I will share later tonight um, thank you very much for your time I think we've cracked this nut in my view um, you know, I just add aluminium in into the fuel, and uh, in a while, uh, you will have uh, my concept of uh, what a reactor should look like. But um, they are not far from the truth, and absolutely, what I have seen in these experiments, both in cavitation and in uh, the Vega experiments uh, in metal and the typical sort of things you see in Matsumoto's work uh, it is producing uh, an exotic vacuum object uh, which is a toroidal shaped internal flow which produces a spherical, spherical overall vortex structure and uh, it's, it, it's what it is um, and there we go and I can understand why this was classified but I'm can't hide my anger that it was uh, but we got there in the end uh, by just looking at what nature was doing so thank you very much for your time and I will see you in the next video